Come on, Facebook. Hit the button. There we go. What's up, hacksters? It is Fundum Friday once again, and I have a pretty sweet set of things to talk to you about. Now, we're going to talk about two main current Kickstarter campaigns, but also a ton of other things that you can do that are related. So, uh, first up we have the Snapmaker 2.0. This is an update to the original Snapmaker CNC, which is three in one. You've got 3D printing, laser engraving and cutting, and CNC carving. So CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control, which usually is used just to refer to CNC routers and that type of thing. So if someone says, I'm gonna CNC the thing, that's usually what they mean. Um, but really it refers to any sort of machine that's controlled by a computer. So such as, you know, a 3D printer and whatever. Um, let me turn my music off, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is an update to the original. Apparently it has better precision and all kinds of things. Uh, the cool thing about this, it's quite similar, actually, to another one we recently talked about called the Hexbot, uh, which was another all-in-one desktop robot arm, which was a lot uh, cheaper. So it was $199 US. 100% funded in five minutes. It's hard to beat that. Uh, but this one has raised almost four million dollars, which is also ridiculous and nearly four times what they were asking for. It is significantly more pricey. So this one right now starts at $719 if you were unlucky enough to miss out on the first round of $600. But yeah, you can print all kinds of stuff, PLA, using wood filament, uh, flexible filament, ABS. You can also do laser engraving and cutting. You can do CNC carving, uh, make PCBs, make little drones out of carbon fiber, all kinds of cool stuff, super high res, kind of like the, the Hexbots thing, uh, besides being really simple and sort of low cost, was that it also has really high repeatability. Um, this one kind of benefits from its well, it has very good accuracy as well, but it's very customizable. So it's super modular. You can get the small one or the big one, and presumably you could also sort of hack it yourself. Um, they compare swapping out the heads on this thing to changing the lenses on a camera. It's supposed to be really simple. And uh, there's all these different options for what you can add on to it. So not only are they offering these ones for now, but... oh. Come back, window. <laughs> but uh, later on, they're talking about adding like an e-stop, a camera, enclosures, lights, a hand wheel, etc. So if you wanted to pretend you were just doing it all, I mean, you could do it all by hand, I guess, if you're using the hand wheel. But yeah, um, they give you the whole specs for the controller. You put it together yourself. They have a picture here of uh, a family just putting it together together <laughs> and uh, also great precision. But yeah, so it seems like the more DIY option. If you look at the hex bot, it's kind of this all in one, as it says, sort of it comes like this in one unit and you can change out the heads, but otherwise it's mostly just one piece. And this one, you really put it together yourself. You can use this custom software that they have. Um, it's got power loss recovery. And, well, all kinds of recovery. There's another one of where it um, can recover if it runs out of filament. Also another really nice backup option. Uh, auto leveling. Ideally, you don't have to do that much with it. And a flexible platform, which I think is really cool. Because at times, I have definitely had parts adhere to the platform such that I had to like really uh, like scrape at it in order to get the things off. And this looks so nice. Mm. There's a built-in camera, and this is why I opened up a page on the Glowforge forum as well. So I think this is an exclusive forum that you have to uh, have a Glowforge in order to access, but they have a really cool new thing where they have, uh, as of four days ago, if you have a Glowforge, you can use this new calibration system to make sure that your lid camera is going to be really accurate. And this is something that I've noticed on my machine and other people have complained about before, which is that the placement of your image in the interface isn't always exactly how it lines up on the material itself, which is really important if you're doing something precise. Or for example, if you try to cut something once, 
and or they call it printing <laughs> um, and it doesn't go all the way through and you need to do another round uh, this enables you to actually be able to do that and someone posted an example of them being able to do that which is super cool you do need to have a piece of proof grade draft board in order to sort of print one round of sort of fiducial calibration marks and then uh, put that back in the machine and uh, yeah, so it, it prints an entire grid of markings on a sheet of draft board, takes a picture, then measures its height in multiple locations to build a 3D model of the surface. And then that creates a calibration model that is permanently stored on your printer, at least until you calibrate it again. And it supposedly makes your camera more accurate for future prints so that you'll have, you know, and then you just have to make sure that the material you put in later on is super flat and it should work out just great. So that is all about the Snap Maker uh, 2.0. It's got a cool aluminum grid table if you want. Wow, cool. Um, for cutting on. And uh, these ha this got 26 days to go. These are supposed to deliver in January 2020. Or if you get the more expensive versions, I think, oh yeah, February 2020. If you were an early bird, you could have gotten it in this November, but you probably already missed that if you're watching this. So our second campaign is the Chatterbox. I love the idea of this. There's all these, you know, every time there's a, um, another security scandal of like a toy being marketed to kids that's connected, it was like a really cool thing for a while and there are all these horrible scandals with like people remotely accessing the uh the data and it and being able to see like you know addresses kids names pull up files the kids had recorded with their voices it was super bad for a while and it probably still is um because some of these things don't ever get fixed they just arrest the hackers who report it <laughs> that's happened at least once it's really bad um so this one <laughs> Is an alternative to that. It's sort of like the Google AIY voice kit, uh, if that picture will load. Yeah, the little cardboard guy with the arcade button on the top. I've got one over there. I should grab it. But this one is better in every way because you still build it yourself, but your kid can build it. It's cuter. <laughs> uh, it's got a bigger arcade button on the top, which I think is fantastic. It's very important to have a large, colorful button. You still build it yourself, but also it can be programmed in block code, like similar to Blockly or Scratch. And it is totally designed with privacy in mind from the ground up. And how can you trust that? Well, this is built, it's based on Mycroft, which is one of the alternatives to uh, Google Assistant and Snips, or and, uh, <laughs> and Alexa. So uh, we they've gone through already a couple of rounds of crowdfunding. They crowdfunded their first Mycroft device. They, uh, we covered the Mycroft Mark II open voice assistant. This one as well ran on Raspberry Pi. It's got a USB thingy so that you can uh, input so that you can um, mod it yourself. It's very focused on you being able to control your data and modify it yourself. Super cool. Look at that. It's kind of a similar idea. It's made from all recycled chipboard. Um, and yeah, you get this little smart speaker guy and their own little custom bonnet. Uh, it is quite simple, but or quite similar rather, but it seems to have a couple of advantages that are quite nice. The interesting thing that I don't quite get yet is that it says, think of Chatterbox as a smart assistant that doesn't know it's smart yet. And then you have to teach it new tricks, which is kind of cool. So you build your own apps for it, I guess, with this Blockly type language. Um, tells you what the children learn. Here are some skills people have made for it. Getting the weather, getting kid-friendly news, setting timers, sending messages, messaging teachers, calling your parents, setting alarms. Um, and then there's all these integrations and stuff. So it says it's powered by Minecraft AI. I'm not sure if it's actually made by the same people, but it is um, powered by Minecraft and it, uh, runs, for example, DuckDuckGo, which is the very privacy-focused uh, search engine, which I love. I use it all the time. Um, the thing with privacy and non-tracking-based search engines is that if you're afraid of getting all your information in a bubble, then you know you won't get that because it isn't based on anything it knows about you. However, that also means that it may 
give you much less targeted results, so it could be harder to find what you want. It's a balance. Um, but yeah, privacy first. If you're afraid of your kids, especially being able, like being tracked or, you know, whatever, exposed to things before you're ready for that. They also have really cute <laughs> child kid pictures of, I'm assuming that these people are grown-ups now, but on the site they're shown as their, their children's pictures. Um, 56 days to go on this one. You can get it for $119 with the early bird version. You can get two pack for $238, which is twice that. Um, you can sponsor a classroom uh, for four of them. Uh, $1,000 for eight of them, etc. And they are supposed to be delivered this December, so that's very exciting. Ooh! Oh, no, yeah. And if you just want a shout out, then you can <laughs> you can get that in August. Uh, they're already over twice past their goal, which is exciting, so you'll definitely um, be likely to actually get this. And yeah, so yeah, there was this previous Mycroft Mark II speaker. You can also build your own smart assistant with Mycroft. It's available as a Raspberry Pi image called Pycroft as of January 2017, so that's been out for a while. It should be a pretty stable platform by this point. Same thing with the Snapmaker. This being like the second version of their printer, it should be pretty good. Um, also, as another option, you can use the Matrix Voice or Matrix Creator running snips.ai. I'm building a robot called Trio using that. Uh, it should be pretty fun. Um, he's based on a third hand. But yeah, this one uh, is going to be able to take pictures for me to document my projects and stuff. And it's all going to be controlled by snips.ai, which is another privacy-focused smart voice assistant platform. And it's um, compatible with the Matrix voice. You can also, uh, as of today this was published, um, if you have a Matrix voice or Matrix creator, which is an open platform upon which you can run um, Alexa, Google Assistant, snips.ai, or Mycroft, or whatever else you want. Um, you can also use Chirp with it. Uh, so yeah, this is basically a, if you're not familiar with the Matrix platform, this is the, the creator, and then this little one over here that it hooked up to a bunch of stuff is the voice. And they've got, each got an LED ring, a Xilinx FPGA. This one has an NFC reader. Um, they've got the whole Raspberry Pi out and their own little GPIO outputs. Um, what else? Oh yeah, they've got a, microphone array so that they can do directional sound capture and figure out where uh, the sound is coming from. In fact, that's one of the early demos on the voice is like showing on the LED ring which direction the sound is coming from. All kinds of other sensors and stuff like accelerometers and things. Um, but yeah, those are the Matrix devices. So you've got all kinds of options. You know, here's the kid-friendly version. Not, not this one. This one. Chatterbox, kid-friendly version. You've got the sort of smooth uh, Mark, Mycroft Mark II. You can build uh, the Google AIY voice kit. You can build something with the Matrix and snips.ai. Um, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Those are my two recommendations for this week. Snapmaker 2.0 and Chatterbox. But I also have a bonus thing, which is that Roscon 2019 is now accepting applications for their diversity scholarships. So if you're interested in robots, which is probably true if you've considered continued watching through this whole thing, um, then you should totally consider attending Roscon. Ros is the robot operating system. It's going to be in Macau at the end of October. And yeah, if you are interested in attending, you can be eligible for one of these scholarships. Uh, let's see, du -du 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 eligibility, um, including not, but not limited to basically people who have been traditionally underrepresented in the robotics community. So women, people uh, in LGBTQIA communities, people with disabilities, people from racial and or ethnic minorities in the robotics community, and people from developing nations, etc. Um, and then, yeah, it covers things like attendance for the conference, uh, sharing a room with another attendee, and uh, if absolutely needed, uh, they can chip in for travel as well. So Roscon, yeah, watch out for that uh, in October, November. Uh, whether or not you go for one of the scholarships, I think it should be a cool time. I'm not going probably, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> we'll find out. It could be a busy year, but anyway. 
Uh, and, oh, yeah, if you're interested in robots, come see my talk at Maker Fair with Odd J next Sunday uh, in San Mateo. It's going to be on the center stage at noon, and we're talking about our robot assistants, or familiars. So uh, here's my headless RG2 bot, which is the one that's hooked up to the Matrix voice right now. Headless, but he has wings, and they move now, so that's kind of cool. Uh, he still doesn't fly. Don't ask me that. I'll get mad. <laughs> but yeah, um, gonna have an awesome time. See a bunch of people at Maker Fair next week. Can't wait. Have a great weekend, and uh, if you're still wrapping up your Maker Fair projects, solidarity. <laughs> I feel your pain. Uh, in fact, I'm going to be on again in just a moment. I'm going to be talking about the Stereo Pi, which is a device from uh, Crowd Supply, and uh, I'm just putting it together for the first time because I want to be it to be part of Archie's brain. It's a stereo camera uh, set up on the Raspberry Pi, so stay tuned for that. Alright, have an awesome weekend and we'll see you soon. Ciao!